Hello children. Today we are going into chapter number two and the topic is latitudes and longitudes. Now the question is what are latitudes and longitudes? So today I'm going to explain what they are and what are their uses. Now latitudes and longitudes are imaginary lines. Now when I say imaginary lines, it's like this. We cannot see them, we don't know where they are, but we have to use them to differentiate how our earth works. Now, latitudes are horizontal lines. which go right from the north to the south. They are parallel in nature. And longitudes, are uh, sorry, yeah, longitudes are vertical lines which go from the north pole to the south pole or we can say that these are vertical lines. Now, when this happens, it forms a grid. And the grid has got many uses, which I will tell you a little bit later. But I hope you have understood what are latitudes and what are longitudes. Remember, latitudes are horizontal lines and longitudes are vertical line. It's like this. Latitudes are imaginary lines that run from the east to the west or from the west to the east. The most important latitude is the equator. It divides the earth into two equal halves, the northern hemisphere and the southern hemisphere. Now, there are other important latitudes also. Now remember, the equator is on zero degree. Then we have another important one, that is the Tropic of Cancer, which is 23 and a half degrees not latitude. Now remember one thing, whichever latitudes are on top of the equator, they are known as north latitudes, and whatever are below the equator are known as southern latitudes. So whenever we are giving the degree or the distance from one to the other latitudes, we have to say, and tell, I'll tell what are the degrees. Now I'll just go into the important latitudes. So I will explain to you the lot, uh, important latitudes. Then another important latitude is the Arctic Circle. Which is at 66 and a half degrees north latitude. And this is the North Pole. Now, on the southern part of the equator, we have the Tropic of Capricorn, which is at 23 and a half degrees south latitude, okay? I 
Another important one is the Antarctic Circle. which is at 66 and a half degrees south latitude and then we have the south pole which is at 90 degrees. Ninety degrees south, ninety degrees north. Now another thing regarding latitudes. They never touch each other. They are known, also known as parallels of latitudes. Okay? Now, another thing if you notice in this drawing, as soon, the more they move towards the north, or the more they move towards the south, they get smaller in size. Okay, please remember this. They become smaller as they advance towards the north pole and the south pole. The equator is the largest latitude, like I already said before. Now, why are these latitudes important? Is because they divide our Earth into heat zones. From the Tropic of Cancer to the Tropic of Capricorn, this is known as the Torrid Zone. Another word we can use for the torrid zone instead of torrid zone, if you find it difficult to remember, we can call it the tropical zone. This area is where everything is hot. Okay, then after that, from the Tropic of Cancer to the Tropic to the Antarctic Circle and from the Tropic of Cancer to the Arctic Circle, these areas are known as temperate zones. These areas are not too hot, not too cold. They are just fine. And the last part is the Arctic Circle, which is also known as the Frigid Zone. here, the Antarctic Circle to the South Pole is also known as the Frigid Zone. As it is very, very cold. Okay, children. Now we are going to move on to longitudes. What are longitudes? Longitudes are imaginary lines which run vertically from the North Pole to the South Pole. Unlike latitudes, they are not parallel, but they meet at the North Pole and at the Sun Pole. Again, unlike latitudes, who are of different sizes, longitudes are of the same size and they widen at the equator. Now let's go down to longitudes.
What are longitudes? What are their uses? So let's go down to point number one. Longitudes are important indicators of time. Now, it's like this. Let's say this is the prime meridian. And then we have another meridian, uh, another meridian coming right through and joining in at the South Pole and the North Pole. They join up over here. Now the distance between one to the other is four minutes. This you have to keep in your mind because when we are calculating time, we have to calculate four minutes between each longitude. Point number two. Longitudes are also known as meridians. Remember that. Okay? Longitudes are also known as meridians. And the most important meridian is the meridian of time. That is the prime meridian. Okay? And the prime meridian passes through the Royal Observatory of Greenwich Village near South London. Now, talking about longitudes and meridians. The prime meridian is on this side of the earth, but on the other side of the earth, we have, the, this is both at zero degree, okay? This is both at zero degree. This is also at zero degree. But on the face of the earth, when we are looking at it, this is the prime meridian, but the meridian from the north to the south, see, south to the north, prime meridian, north to the south, again, prime, uh, international date line. Okay, this is known as IDL, means international date line. This one is known as the prime meridian. Then, next thing, prime meridian marks the difference between the dates of the Eastern Hemisphere and Western Hemisphere. Now, the Eastern Hemisphere and Western Hemisphere has been divided by the International Date Line as well as the prime meridian. But, let us take it from the prime meridian. Now, this part of the Earth is known as the Western Hemisphere. And the other part, this part of the earth, okay, it is known as the Eastern Hemisphere. I hope you have understood this much. Now, just like the equator divides the earth into two equal halves, that means the northern hemisphere, I mean, and the southern hemisphere, we have also the eastern hemisphere, uh, western hemisphere and the eastern hemisphere. Latitudes, we have the equator, and from here, from the equator to the north pole, we have 90 okay 90 latitudes and again from the equator to the south pole we have another 90 latitudes making a total of 80 and 90 plus 90 180 180 plus 1 means 181 latitudes. Similarly, similarly, we have on this side, that means, let us talk about
Remember radiance. O long diffuse. On this side, from here, right down to the international date line, okay, to the international date line, we have around about 180 meridians. And the same way from here, right around to the international date line, we have another 180 meridians, making it a total of 360 meridians. So my children, that is all that I have to say. Oh, one more thing I forgot. Remember one thing. When you are crossing from one hemisphere to the other, that means especially at the international date line, you have to lose one day. Okay, the dates are such that you have to go over to the next side. When you move over the international date line, you are missing one day. And similarly, if you are coming from the front and crossing it to the other side, let's from, from west to east, there over you will gain one day. Okay, now, locating places on a grid. Now, this is just an example that I have made for you, just to make you understand how the grid works. Now, these lines that are coming from the top to the bottom, these are all longitude. And the lines that are running parallel, these are all latitudes. Now, when a latitude and a longitude crosses at a certain point, now, that is the location that the person or the building or anything that you're looking for can be found. But it is important that you know the latitudes and the longitudes of whatever you are looking for. Let's say for example, example Dimapo. So you must come to know what is the latitude and the longitude of Dimapo and then you can find Dimapo easily. Or just find out the latitude and the longitude and then you can find the place very easily. So, to conclude with children, I would like to say, please go through this video well, okay, and go through it, understand it. I've also sent you the PPTs, so please go through it, and then if you have any difficulties whatsoever in understanding me, my phone number is 98565-86984. Please call me, I'm forever yours. Thank you.